Okay, so this is part two of an exercise in Sheets, <clears throat> working with fire death data. So we, we just looked at, kind of got to know our data. <clears throat> now we're going to spend a little more time really assessing, do we have any problems here that we need to fix? So kind of three things that you want to always look for. You want to, let me back up. The way I tell people is you want to find the flaws before they find you. So because there's always going to be flaws so and they will bite you if you don't find them. Three really common flaws are somehow the values are not standardized. So for example I had a data set once where Minneapolis was spelled like 20 different ways, right? So that's an idea of dirty data, unstandardized data. Um, I'm going to turn the filters back on. We we looked at those the smoke detector presence and we saw no unknown yes. That this is an indicator of very standardized data. There are no variations. There's really just three options plus blanks. Uh, so there is the blanks issue, and we'll talk about that in a second. But if we look at um, this other smoke detector column, now we have we have none, not operating properly, operating properly operational condition unknown and unknown. These two seem a lot like each other and maybe I'd call that a little bit of unstandardized dirty data possibly. So th it's this kind of situation that you might want to be looking for. The other thing I noticed in we were looking at last names, look at there's a couple of them that have quotes around them. Now that might not be the end of the world especially if we're not using the names but it these kinds of things are things you want to look for. So you could see the filter can allow us to see some of this, but a better way to see this will be a pivot table. Um, the, other th the other two things you want to look for is incomplete data. So like these, these blanks and the NAs. Um, why are some of these blank and others are NA? Like is there a difference? Does the agency treat that differently? Um, in, you know, is a blank mean one thing and NA means something entirely different? And then they have not none and they have unknown. What's the difference between a blank and an unknown? It's, it's very um, different here. The other thing uh, would be missing data. Are these truly all the fires? Uh, I worked with a data set about um, police chases and um, we had written about several high profile chases where pedestrians were hurt or killed and we pulled those you know out of our news archives and we looked up the date and you know where it was and all that and we set out to try to find it in the data set and we could not there were a couple of them we could not find and we called the agency back and sure enough they admitted that sometimes these accidents don't, or these car chases don't get in there like they're supposed to. So, you know, you know, we did some kind of smart work to figure out if, if it was there or not. The other thing would be like, so the third thing you kind of want to look for is the structure of your data and kind of what is here in terms of what you need. Turn my filters off. So, for example, if we wanted to do something about, do that analysis I was talking about, how many of these occurred in winter versus some other season, we have no columns here that expressly say this one was in the winter and then this one was in the summer, right? We don't have a way to discern that. But because we have a date, we can do that. The thing about data is that you have to have you have you have to have things very explicit. The the these programs need a column that says what season it is. You can't just have it guess based on a date, for example, or something. It 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 likes very very specific information. You got to remember, computers operate on a on bytes, which are zeros and ones. It's all a series of zeros and ones, very specific. It wants exact. So we don't we don't have that here, but that would be something we would add. Um, a structure and kind of what fields you have is a common thing that needs to be dealt with before you can do your analysis. Um, I've seen a lot of people struggle with, you know, looking at their data going, how do I how do I 
get the answer I want from this, I can't figure it out. And almost always it's because something is missing. Like we need to add something. We need to, in this case, we're going to strip that month out of the year and then use that month to identify which season it's in. We're going to do some work on that. Um, but there might also be structure things like the way this is set up, like what's in the columns versus what's in the rows. Um, this this is one in this case this is one row per person killed um we know we can probably take a wild guess that these two here on July 3rd with the same last name probably the same fire the same house the same family but that is not expressly indicated here you might get a different data set where it's one row per fire and then you know, it counts up how many people in a column or something like that. That's a different kind of setup. I had a data set once also about fires. It was about fire calls to the different agencies. And each, I, I expected each row would be a fire, but no, each row was a truck that was sent out to a fire. So any given fire could have anywhere from one to 20 rows depending on how many trucks were sent out to fight that fire. And so in order to count fires, I had to uh, make huge changes to the structure to get it down to one row per fire so I could do that counting. Um, and there's, there's lots of things like that, but just keep in mind that idea of like structure somehow might need to be rearranged. So, um, as I mentioned, pivot tables can be a good way to kind of see where you might have problems. So, and it's also, pivot tables are also going to be your key thing for a lot of your analysis. So we'll, we'll let's spend a little time on pivot tables. So like we did with sorting, uh, to do a pivot table, you need to put your cursor somewhere in your data. You know what, let's back up a second. Let's talk about what a pivot table does. So. Imagine you have a room full of people and they're all wearing solid colored shirts. And let's say I want everyone with a green colored shirt to stand in one corner of the room and everyone with a blue colored shirt to stand in another corner of the room and the red pe red shirts in another, uh, you know, etc. And But then I want to know how many are in the green group, how many in the blue group, how many in the red group. That would be summarizing our information and grouping and summarizing. This is a concept that is used very, very widely in data analysis. And if we go back to this first table that we looked at, this was grouped and summarized. They took this, this same data with an, you know, each row is a person who died and they said, okay, Mr. Cavillan, is in the 2005 group, so we're going to count him in the 2005 group, which I don't even have on here, do I? Um, where's the 2006 one? Mr. Mead is one of the people in 2006, so he is counted in this 46 count. <coughs> and and they're, they're grouped based on some value in the data set. So we could group based on um, the date. We could group based on, usually don't want to group based on names, unless you're doing this family thing, maybe. Um, age is also quite difficult because they're so specific. <clears throat> but we could create a new column where we could group by age group, like how many are children, how many are adults or some other groupings. How many, we already know this sprinkler thing is, is not very good, but what if it was better? How many were, had a sprinkler and how many didn't or how many were unknown? Anything, the, there has to be a column that is, is, is used to set up your group by. And then the counting is based on the rows. <coughs> And, and, the, and we can either do, for, with a group by and a pivot table, you can either count the rows, which is what we're going to do here, or you could add 
numbers in from a specific column. So we, and we don't have that here, but we need a different example for that. But let's say you had you're dealing with money, like campaign finance contributions, and each row was a contribution, and there was a column that indicated the dollar amount. In that case, we could say add up all the values in the dollar amount column and tell me how much that was based on some group. So we can so a pivot table allows us to do that kind of math. We can do counting, summing, averages. In sheets you can do medians. In Excel you can't, by the way, in a pivot table. Um, we can do the minimum and the maximum. We can do standard deviation. There's a bunch of different uh, math operations you can do based on each of your groups. So let's do a pivot table. Again, we're going to put our cursor somewhere that is in our data. Do the Control A on a Windows, Command A on a Mac. Go to Insert, and about partway down the uh, menu is Pivot Table. And it's going to say, here's the range of data I'm going to use to make this pivot table. It has already guessed that it's this range right here in our data. This is why I had you put the cursor in your data somewhere because it would automatically go out and find the edges of your data set. And you're, you're always going to want to do new sheet. So just make sure the, the data range looks good. Say new sheet, create. Now we have a pivot table editor page. And you'll notice that it made a new sheet down here at the bottom called, and it called it pivot table. I might have called it pivot table too because I did have another pivot table in here before I started recording this. On yours, it probably is going to say pivot table one. So over on the right, we have our, our pivot table editor, and it's also showing you the list of columns that exist in our data set. It has this little section called suggested. I would recommend you just push that little up carrot looking thing and make the suggested part go away because we're not going to use that. So we have rows, columns, values, filters, and these add buttons. These are going to be what we use to make our pivot table. And the pivot table is going to appear over here in the middle where it's, where it's this big blank spot that says rows and values. Okay, so the first thing you need to think about is what is the group we're doing. So I want to know, um, let, let's, to, to, for some data cleanup issues, let's look at that column that has um, whether or not the smoke detector was working properly, which is this column that's just called smoke detector. So you can get this into the, we're going to get this into the rows part, and you can do it multiple ways. One is you can click on this value here and drag it until you get under rows and then you can let go and it'll add it in there. I'm going to exit out so I can show you the other option. The other is to push this add button and you can literally just choose smoke detector and it'll put it in. And it, the same thing works is you can, you can move this around if you need to um, or you could push the X button to get it to go away. So smoke detector. Once it's in here, then you'll see that there's some order things. This is going to come into play more when we add some numbers in. And then, um, yeah, the, the, it's, it's sorting. And it's, and it's got show totals on because it's going to make a grand total for us. But we don't actually have numbers. We haven't done the math part. The math part occurs in this values box. <coughs> so we don't have a column in here that we're going to do values, we're going to do math on, you know, something like summing or averaging or median. At least not right now. We'll do that with age in a little bit, but we don't have that right now. So you just need a way to count the rows. So if we bring smoke detector back down here into values, so now we have it in two places. I know that seems weird, but that you just need to give it something. Um, and you'll see that it's saying summarize by count A. If you pull down on that, here's all the different math things you can do. And notice it says count A and count and count unique. This is kind of unique to sheets. It's a little different than Excel. Count A simply means count the rows. Um, 
This other count operates differently, and you'll see if once I did it, it switched it all to zeros. Um, so we're not going to use that. So you want to make sure that's count A, but it usually that's what it usually defaults to, especially if you put in a column here that is has words in it, not numbers. Like smoke detector, that column has words, right? So we can see we've got some problematic data here, lots of different variations of NA, none, unknown, unknown. Um, so this is, you know, this is another way for us to see the problems. So, so now this is just counting how, how many things we have. The other thing you can do is have it display this as a percentage of the grand total or some sort of percentage. And there's different ways this works. Um, right, you can either do it right in the same column, and that's going to happen down here in the values box. Right now it says show as default. You have these other options here, percent of row, percent of column, percent of grand total. Percent of row and percent of column really only come into play if you're doing what's called a cross tabulation, where you also have values in the columns. So that's where this columns box comes to play. We're not going to do that right now, but in a little bit we'll do that. But we can do percent of grand total. And now you'll see that it has turned our answers into percentages, which because of the messy data, we can, can't say a whole lot here. But <clears throat> we do know that 12% of all the deaths were situations where they documented that the smoke detector was not operating properly. Um, and then there's another 11% where there was no smoke detector. So that's kind of interesting, right? So I'm going to put this back to default. The other thing you can do, and this sometimes this is what you want, is bring that column down here a second time. So now we have two of them, and we can change, the, so we have one that has our numbers, and now we can change the second one to that percent of grand total. So we have both the number and the percentage right next to each other so we can see what's going on. You got to remember sometimes with percentages you might be dealing with small numbers, you know, just a really few, and it might be good to, to be able to see that and understand what's going on. Okay, so that's our first pivot table. <coughs> Each time you make a pivot table, you can either override this existing pivot table and just keep changing it, or if you want to save this for your future, uh, I highly recommend we name the sheet first. So we can go down to at the bottom where it's a, it has pivot table. If you just double click on the name of that, you can edit it. And, um, so in this case, we might say um, smoke detector function or something like that. And sometimes I put the word pivot in there so I remember that it's a pivot table. So now I have that. So then in order to make a new pivot table, we'll go back to our main data page. So I'm going to click on main data. Here we are. So again, we're going to highlight our data set, go to the insert menu and make a pivot table and it's going to create a new sheet. So now we can do something a little more interesting. So that, that thing we just looked at <coughs> a minute ago was, you know, kind of messy. So let's do something that's not so messy. Like how many deaths were there per calendar year? Oh, you know what? We can't do that, can we? Well, let's see what happens. If we put the date in the rows, it actually just puts the dates, right? It doesn't have the years. And so it's just how many there were, it will end up with just how many there were on that given date, how many deaths on that date. It doesn't do much for us. So we need that year split off into a new column. So we're going to have to fix that before we can do that. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to just scratch this whole pivot table. This is something you have to do sometimes. So down here, where instead of changing the name of the pivot table at the bottom, I'm going to right mouse click and say delete. And it's just going to get rid of the sheet. OK, so now we're back to our main data. I just thought of something else we should look at before we move on. Let's go back to our first pivot table. Um, 
let me give you a couple little tricks first. Sometimes you might come back and this is what it looks like, your pivot table, and that designer is gone or the pivot table editor. What you want to do is come over here to your answer and there's a little edit button. Push edit and it'll come back. Okay, so this is looking at is the smoke detector working or properly or not. So we might want to just winnow this only to the deaths where there was a smoke detector. Um, so that we just look at that universe of data. And if you remember, our data set has a column saying, was a smoke detector present or not, yes or no. Um, there's a lot of unknowns here, so this is tricky, but I want to give you this concept of, I, I want to look at a smaller universe of my data. I don't want to look at all of it in this pivot table. That's where this filters comes in play. So we could go to filters and say choose smoke detector presence. And this might be hard to see, but down at the bottom, right now, when, when you put that in the filter, then it says status showing all items. We can click on that, and, and now we have a filter just like we looked at earlier. And we can eliminate these yes, these no, unknowns, no's, and blanks. We can just say yes, there was a, um, a, fire, a smoke detector and say OK. And now look at how the number of rows went way down. And it's still kind of interesting how many they, they, they didn't capture the operational condition of the smoke detector. That's a pretty significant number and makes me wonder about these fire investigations and how thorough they were. But here's where having that grand total is useful because see how this is a much smaller number of deaths than what we were dealing with previously. So that's the filters filters box. The only thing we haven't gotten to yet is that columns box. Like I said, that's going to be for a, a um, cross tabulation and we'll get to that in a little bit. All right, we'll go back to the main data. And I am going to stop here and we'll do an part three for the remainder.